This will be the last video of the poor man's workbench series. I've made some big changes here and uh, the very final uh, touches will be uh, done today and I'll bring you along for that. But you might notice a second vise has been at added. Right there, a tail vise. This vise was sent to me from my subscriber, Richard. Richard uh, contacted me and said he had one kicking around, wanted to know if I could use a second vise and I said, boy, I sure could. And this really complements the project. So mounts on the end. I'll show you why that is here uh, through the rest of the video. But today we're going to be building dogs for our newly drilled dog system. We're gonna start with a one inch dowel. I only need two dogs, so we'll cut this in half. But first off, we're gonna to need to turn it down on the lathe. The holes that I drilled are seven eighths. So we'll turn this down to about 13 sixteenths and uh, we'll build a little spring wire system made out of a coat hanger. This is the Paul Sellers method and we'll see how it works. So I've got center mark there, so I'll take a little drill bit and I'll just put a little bit of a little deal there. It helps my lathe to chalk up in center. We'll go chalk that up and then we'll rasp this down. So the dogs I want to be just a hair under seven eighths, but maybe not quite 13 16 So I'm gonna start slow here. So I'll take my seven eighths bit, seven eighths bit, which is what I drilled here. And then we'll use our caliper here and we'll check this as we're turning it down on the lathe. And we'll make sure we're just a little under that and then we'll try it on for size. This was uh, just a one inch oak dowel, if I didn't say that already. See how it fits here. Very good. Um, not too tight, It'll, it should pass all the way, all the way through, and which it does. Looks like it fits in all the holes. So that fits in there really nice. So let's cut this in half. And then I'll go grab a coat hanger and we'll build a little wire, spring wire retention system. So this dowel is five and a quarter long, so that will put us, the center would be a two and five eighths. Two and five eighths. This is the first time I'm gonna use my, I've got to use my new uh, little miter box cutter. That miter box in the vise there. This will help me to make a nice clean 90 degree cut. So I'll take my straight edge here and I'm gonna mark about uh, a third, take a third of these off and put a line across here. So there you can see the third marked and then we'll come down here a half inch right off the face there, right before we cut the shoulder. So we'll take this, our first one, there's our third mark right there and set that down flush with our oak jaws on our vise. And then we'll make a cut right on our line down to that third way, or that half inch mark. Now we can connect these lines here, our top line and our bottom. You can see there how we're gonna cut that. I'm gonna cut these down. I want that little bit of that angle, that'll help hold the wood down on the bench. Now 
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to drill a, uh, an eighth inch hole right in the center in the bottom of these. Oh, not, not too deep. It doesn't be much more than three quarters of an inch or so. So I've got the dogs chalked up in the vise there with the shoulders facing the front of the bench, just like that. And we're going to take our saw and we're going to cut a little groove in there about the thickness of a coat hanger. You can see just like, just like that. Now on the back side of our dog, we got the shoulder down there on the vise. We're going to cut that same groove along the top or the back of the dog. Now I've marked my shoulder there because we don't want to go beyond it. We're going to take our drill bit and we're going to drill another eighth inch hole just below the shoulder and we're going to go all the way through. So with our short piece of coat wire, we'll start right down there and we'll bend this a hard 90 across the bottom. And then bend it all the way around here. We'll take our pliers and we're going to mark where that 90 is right there at our hole, right? So just below that hole. And then we're going to make a hard 90 again. Like this. And we can cut this off to probably about, oh, I don't know, five eighths. Stick this in the bottom. And with a little bit of finagling, we should be able to get that in the hole. So the final thing is, it seems to work pretty good, is to just to clamp these in your vise and kind of mash that, mash that spring in there, seat it really nice. There's a lot of spring in a coat hanger. You can see there and that won't come out now. That's, that's in this gear, that's, a, that's a, an assembly. So here they are with their springs in there. What'd that cost? Not too much. You know, I, I enjoy doing these things and my thanks to Paul Sellers for, uh, this is his design, I'm just copying it and I'll put, uh, give him credit down in the subject heading. You should check out his channel if you haven't. It's one of my favorites, if not my favorite channel. Uh, I, I like the way he approaches woodworking. Uh, woodworking is so elitist. Everything has become so specialized and so elitist on YouTube and elsewhere that uh, it's like, you know, if you can't be at this particular level or you don't have this special stuff, then, then you're not as good as the next guy. I, I don't like that. I like his approach because it's really is geared towards the common man and it's about thinking about ways to do things yourself and just don't assume that when you need something to go buy it. I'm the worst at that. Uh, I grew up in that mentality and, and it's, it's been a lifelong struggle to get to change my way of thinking to when I need something rather than just go and buy it but see if there's a way to use what I have or or to fix something or just come up with a clever idea but uh, let's see how they fit here This is really quite nice. Uh, the resistance is just perfect, where I can push them down and they hold, they're easy. They'll, they'll pass through the hole very firmly. I can turn them. Um, wonderful idea. Wonderful do-it-yourself dogging system. All right, let's try it in action here. 
So this uh, laminated board right here, or this is three pieces of Doug fir that I milled. It was one of the first things I ever milled with my chainsaw mill and I've been saving it. It's been drying now for five years or so. And it was a four by four and I cut it down uh, with the chainsaw mill and I've hand planed this down. This is gonna be the bottom of my traditional timber framers tool grip. I've not had a place to store my timber framing tools um, and, and I want a, a nice grip that is long enough to fit all my stuff, my slick, everything fits inside. So this is where I'm starting with it and where I really noticed um, a problem with clamping. So as I was wanting to plane this down, as I was planing this down, I had a real difficult time on clamping it. Uh, I could put a clamp on it, but then the clamp is in my way and I'm not getting full strokes. I'm not getting nice, even uh, ability to plane. So I saw immediately that having a dogging system was very, very important. So on the vise, I can simply lift up the dog there to half the height of the wood or whatever, just so it's not above the wood where I don't run any risk of hitting it with my plane. And then I can, I'll just back this up until I hit, expose two of my dogs here. Now I can drop them in, and th these being wood are nice, so if I do hit them with my plane, they're not going to hurt anything, and the wire is well below. Now I can simply tighten my clamp, and now I have an absolute secure uh, way uh, to, to clamp my, my board that I'm working on. I can plane, I can run full length. It just gives me so many, so many options. Just wonderful. This configuration also, it doesn't just limit me to the, to the tail vise. Uh, I have access to these holes off of my main vise as well. So I can, I can put, set my dogs in here and smaller pieces like this that I'm currently working on. I can use my main vise as well and hold these secure right here. So what are my impressions of this bench? Uh, would I recommend it uh, to you, to, to someone who was considering building themselves a proper bench? I would. I'm still learning to use it. It's, it's kind of like a, a learning to drive. Um, it, it's a tool. It's a, probably one of the most important tools uh, to have because it's the foundation of everything that you build. But I really am starting to see the wisdom of it. The tool well, the size, the dimensions of it, I think are just ideal. The height, uh, my height ended up at 40 and a quarter, which is perfect for me. I've done a lot of planing and it's ideal. If you're a little bit shorter, you might go down to, you might take that down a little bit. You'll just have to try. Um, I like the six foot width, especially having two vices. It was important to me to have, I wanna have all my work in one area. Primarily, I'm gonna be working right here in front of the main vice. And so I situated that in a part of the room where I have nice light. Um, I have an inspiring view. I can see outside um, and uh, that, that's all important. Take those things into consideration when you're placing your vise. I set my vise over here off the side to the right of the post. You want your vise near the post because when you're hammering and beating on it, you want that security, you want that strength that uh, being near a post. If I was only gonna have one vise, I may have considered putting it right on the corner. Um, that way you can overhang pieces and cut. I brought it in because I knew that I was going to be adding a tail vise and that would take care of that problem. You don't need two vices. You can certainly get by with one, but you might consider, again, putting it on the edge like that. Um, the length is good. The height is good. I use two by sixes uh, instead of two by fours on the top like Paul did. Would I do that again? I absolutely would. It was a little bit more difficult. It's quite a bit more weight but the weight really lends itself to a rock solid bench. When I turned this thing around this morning, uh, it, it was difficult to turn around. It is so heavy, especially with the addition of the two heavy vices. It doesn't move a bit. Uh, you can plane on it, you can pound on it. it. It's not going anywhere. It's absolutely dead rock solid, which is 
which is really nice. With the two, I'm not saying that the two by fours wouldn't be. Um, I'm sure that they're fine too. You could always leg it to the floor, but I, I think it's worth it. I think it looks nice. Uh, I would I would do it again. Would I do anything different? I don't think so. Apart from you know some of the some of the issues that I had with gluing it up, I didn't I didn't have enough clamps. But I, I don't know that I would change anything. If I built another one, I think I would do it just the same. I just don't, I, I don't have any complaints. Um, I, I, the total cost. Total cost I had into this, when I said the, in the earlier videos that I had $200 in material, $60 of that was in clamps. So the whole tally, with everything said and done, um, glue and such, was right around $150 to build this bench. Now the vices were both given to me by subscribers, so I didn't have that expense, but I looked online um, and you can find um, really nice vintage vices on eBay if you're willing to restore them and clean them up a little bit for under $100. So I would say that if you paid $100 for a vice, I think you could do this thing for under $250 with a vice. Um, and it's so worth it. So worth it. even if it took you six months to do, and you just did a little bit in the evening, um, I, I would recommend doing it because it's something I'm really proud of, and it's really inspired me to do woodworking. I feel like I have the tools that I need now um, to do nice work and to start building furniture for the home and gifts for people, and it's just a good way to spend the winter. So, I guess that's it. I don't know that I have anything else to add to you, uh, add for you. I'm. I was debating whether or not I was going to do the video series on the carpenter's tool or the tim traditional timber framer's tool grip. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. It's kind of nice. It's not very fun to video all, all the stuff. It's, it, it makes the, the job so much harder and so much more work and I hadn't really decided if I was going to do that or not. Um, I'll think about that. But what it's going to be is it's going to be um, a traditional a, a grip and I'm custom making it so all my timber framing tools fit in here in one place. My slicks, uh, you, it's even long enough to, to put a, to, to put a, an axe in. Uh, my chisels, my mallets, all those things so I can grab it with a handle and I can, I can carry it. I can essentially take this grip and go somewhere and help someone timber framing or I could build a cabin or a small home with everything that will con be contained in it. And I'm using everything, um, for a property, a wood, Douglas fir that I've milled from my chainsaw mill. So that's what I've been working on. Um, I guess that's it. All right. Well, thanks for watching. It's been a long, a long journey. And I couldn't be happier with it. So we'll see you guys on the next video.